Hey Angus. How's it going? What are we doing today? Well, I think we all have a pretty good guess based on the title, but uh, there's a blue four that we found in here. That's right, there's a 79 F100 that's been sitting inside of this abandoned gymnasium for a number of years. And our goal today is to see if we can get that thing to run in the yard drive, hopefully by the end of the day. We don't know a damn thing about it besides the fact that it's been there for a long time. Everything in here needs cleaned out, so it needs to go to its new home, and it potentially has something wrong with the starter. That is the absolute basis of our knowledge. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dig into this and see if we can get it running. So like I had just mentioned, this is an abandoned gymnasium at the same place that Angus's F100 came from. So it has returned home once again. Hopefully it doesn't stay. This was a seventh day Adventist school here in Nevada. And for the last 10 or 15 years, it's been a garage for some buddies of ours. It's really neat. You can actually see like here is the free throw line, uh, the basketball hoops. There's the, the clips for them where they used to be. Uh, some speakers or scoreboards. There's the stage. And you can see like logos and stuff in the floor. Like, let's see. Do you remember what the hell they were called? OP. OPC, OPA. OPA. Yeah, that, did, that helped. Well, that didn't do too much. <laughs> I want to say it's OPA with a couple right. burnout marks on top of it. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, here we go. This was Oak Park Academy, and that used to be the school building right there. She's in rough shape, but enough about the gymnasium. Let's get to the point of today's video. This beautiful 79 F-150 Ranger. How long has this been here? Uh, about eight years. Eight years? Do you know the last time it ran? Uh, about five years ago. Oh, so. Shouldn't be too tough. Mm -hmm. Just, there's probably a reason it didn't start after that. <laughs> It has been leaked on by a rusty roof for a number of years. Check that out. Can't even see through it. Is it open? Ooh, really nice doors. Beautiful Ranger interior, all blue. I love it. Yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and I guess get all of our stuff set up and see if we can get this old girl to come to life. Okay, what the hell? Maybe we start by getting it out from under this balcony. That might not be a bad idea to drag it out of here to where it's dry so we don't have to roll in the concrete. Well, I guess, actually, you know what? What do we even have under the hood? That looks like that's a modified right there. Yay. Wait. No, it's not. What is this? So as the internet would say, you'll notice right here on the top of this block between the thermostat and the distributor, there's no little steel casting. By which I mean that bar right there is absent. That's a modified, that's a Cleveland. So if that bar is absent, you have a Cleveland. And there's no bar here, so I think someone might have put a 351 Cleveland in this truck at some point. Cool. So yeah, that's really weird. We don't know why there's a Cleveland in this truck. It should have came with a modified. And as far as the family knows, because you're the third owner of the truck, yep. Is this your grandpa bought it new? Grandpa bought it brand new in 78, so. And they've never. Not that I know of, it's never been swapped or anything, so. Weird. I say we pull this thing out of here, actually, to work on it. Yeah, initially I thought we might get away with just squeegeeing out of the spot and letting it dry, but I don't think that's. My, my feet are getting cold being on this frozen, wet concrete, so. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really dark, and you guys probably can't see very much, so. I think our first step is going to be pull this thing right out there into the nice, bright sunlight where it's warm and we can work on getting this sucker to crank off. It's the first time she's been outside in what eight years? Eight years or so. Yep. Hell yeah. 
Welcome back to the world. Stuff has changed. Let's get you caught up. You know what's weird to think? We were literally here like three weeks ago pulling that truck out and it was one degree outside. Yep. It was an absolute arctic blast or whatever the hell they call that. Polar, Polar vortex. vortex. <laughs> and here we are three weeks later in t-shirts because it's 55 degrees out. So we uh, pop our um, air cleaner off, make sure everything's clean. Yep. And then see if the car moves, check if it's got oil, see if it turns over the rest of the full rotation with a uh, socket and a ratchet, and then throw a battery at it. Yes. I've never been good with wing nuts. Da -da -da. Think. Oh boy. Well. Yeah. This card might work, you never know. The carburetor's definitely been off before because there's RTV under it. Uh, RTV anywhere else so we can tell someone's been in this motor. Yep, water pump. Water it's pump. It's a different color too. I'm looking for engine swap evidence. Uh, headers or anything. Well, those look fairly normal. Why is there a Cleveland in this? Or am I losing my mind and this isn't a Cleveland? Um, dipstick. You don't have to call me names. <laughs> it is, dude, literally like textbook full wow exactly on the dot <laughs> so we got oil sure do our air intake appears to be clean not full of mouse piss and stuff yay um let's go ahead and get a socket and roll it over by hand make sure she's healthy the valve crane's not angry angus whacker stares longingly into the camera Help. seductively ready to strike at any moment <laughs> so as we mentioned before we're at the same place the f100 came from right over there and which means we're out in the middle of nowhere with not a lot of tools but that's okay because we brought a lot of tools and not a lot of space this is our tang tools portable toolbox laid out on the tailgate right now we've got metric and standard wrenches sockets drivers all the way from half down to a quarter inch all the screwdrivers pliers everything we'll ever need to make this truck run so let's go ahead and do just that. Don't need one of this, one of this, and one of 15 sixteenths. Let's see, there you are. Here we are, sir. I might have to reconfigure those extensions, but that should be what we need to make this engine spin over. I'm sure that noise is fine. Yeah, no, I'm making me want to go the other way. There's the noise, and it's gone, okay. Tough healer. Yeah, that feels yeah. good all the way around. Oh, it's building compression too. Oh, maybe that's what we're hearing. It's just that good old grimy, slippery, this feels like it's full of sand compression sneaking out of there. Yeah. <laughs> that was a mental image I really didn't like. <laughs> Well, she spins over. She's got oil. Uh, our intake's clean. Let's go ahead and put power to it and see what's alive. Dude, I love this two-tone tailgate. It is nice. Wait, what? We're late and smell like beer. Why are there two shrimps? Suck hey, the tall. head. Hey, toy. Oh, what the heck? Squeeze the tail. What is happening? Where's the rest of the bumper? Look at that hitch receiver. <laughs> Jeebus. All right, let's throw a battery in it, see what happens. Something's on somewhere. Got a good sized battery drain. I can tell because when I touch this, it sparks. And if you get sparks, that means something's drawing power. So let's hook that up and watch for all the magic smoke to leave something. Okay, it doesn't seem to be anything that's incorrect. Let's just be an accessory or the key is on or something. Let's go check. Key is not on, but when I turn it on, I get a fastened belt light. Do it, crank. Sure oh, do. This is gonna be easy. Here, I thought we'd have to crawl under it and fix a starter. We could have done this in there. Does the radio work? Oh my God. She falls in love a little fast. And copyright. It's got a working fan. What about headlights? Oh, well, run and take a gander. Hit him. Yeah, there. Well, you got a driver's side. You got both running lights. Eyes are good. Got enough. Oh, got a left. Got a right. I think you had those backwards, but hell yeah. 
Yes, I did. Don't wait. The biggest test. Hey. Well, your high works. So, all of the electrical in this truck works. Hell yes. This is going to be easy. I guess let's uh, go to our ignition system, see if we have a spark, and see if we can make this make some noise. Okay, so this truck is a DuraSpark system. You can tell it is by the way it is, in which it has that gray box on the fender. And, oh, Jesus, that scared the shit out of me, dude. Surprise! <laughs> yeah, they got me twice. And by the fact that if you pop this cap off, there's no points underneath, but rather a reluctor wheel and a Hall Effect sensor in there. What happens here is one of those little tangs right there pass that little magnetic pickup, you can see the strip on it right there. It creates an AC signal, which it sends to that box, which interrupts the ground for this coil and produces a spark. It's just like a point system, but with more failure. Always carry one of those with you if you guys have a Dura Spark truck. Go out to a junkyard, find one, see if it works, and then just throw it behind your seat. I take one with me on every revival. And every one of my Dura Spark trucks has one in the glove box or behind the seat. Next step with these uh, collar type coils, I like to, if you can, wiggle this collar as they like to corrode and since they're not a screw on terminal they have the ability to kind of corrode between the points here so I like to take them and wiggle them around a bit and see if we can get continuity through there. That'll usually help free them up. Now all we have to do is test our ignition system, which is pretty simple. We're just going to unplug this center lead, shove a screwdriver in it, ground it out somewhere, we'll have Angus crank the truck and watch to see if our coil produces a spark. If it does, that proves the Hall Effect sensors, the Dura Spark box, and the coil are all good. Alright, so I've got a screwdriver in here making sure it's touching the contact. I'm now going to ground it out to the distributor body, making sure not to get my hand in this fan or any of the belts or shocked. Go ahead, sir. Turn it on again, but don't crank. Off. Yeah, we're good to go. So, uh, something you might have just seen there when Angus cut the ignition, it cuts the power to this and produces a spark. Same thing as the Dirt Spark box is doing its normal job. So, uh, a quick test, if you ever have one of these that doesn't run, you can go ahead and cycle the key on to off. So you see that getting sparked, that means it has power when it wants it, which generally, generally means your coil and dirt spark are good. If you get that and it's still not running, it's time to look into that Hall Effect sensor, or so I've found out through working on these. Another thing to be aware of is because of the way the system operates doing that, uh, watch where your arms are when you turn the key on, because I've seen the engine fire a cylinder if a cylinder is sitting there on the right stroke with the right fuel charge ready to go. And it just happens to line up with that rotor and it goes and it'll go whoop and move just a bit. So watch your hands when you're turning the key to the on or off position on a Dura Spark. I guess beyond that, it's time to just throw some fuel down this thing and see if she lights off. I'm wondering if we shouldn't take the old gas line off. I don't know how, how long this gas has been in here. I'd hate to fill that carburetor with poop. That's a good call. It's been a reoccurring theme and I think we're learning. <laughs> The one's off. <coughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's not oh, great. Yeah, no, that's pretty old. It smells like eight years ago. Yeah, I'm sure it would run off this, but we don't really want it to. No, that's it's not good for anything in there. Let's go ahead, uh, crank it a little bit, and I'll see if any fuel comes out of this. Okay. And if so, we'll try to find a bolt or something to plug this off for now. Ready? Yep. <laughs> All right. Good. Good. Fuel pump works, so. Uh, well, that's fun. Let's find a bolt to shove in there and plug that off. Cool. Well, if we venture back into the gymnasium and see if we can find a, uh, a bolt to shove in there. Yep. Oh, dude, stairs. Oh, they make lots of noise. That's nice. Oh, hmm. Suddenly rethinking where I'm stepping. I would dare to venture further, but no, I wouldn't. Ah, hell. No one ever dies. What? That's a little soft, I'm not gonna lie. Oh yeah, it's a little soft, but it's, there's been worse. I mean, I'm not surprised seeing how much water gets into this place. 
Yeah, they said it leaked, and I was like, oh, how bad could it be? It's a tin roof. And then I, like, looked up, and they had all these gutters and things set up, which is all kind of an ingenious idea. Oh, they do have gutters and stuff. Yeah. So, oh, my gosh. I tried it into a bucket. Yeah, they've been here for, like, eight, no, ten years. I think they said something like that. And the place is sold, so they're moving out. Yep. This would have been a really great shop if the roof was in good shape and all the windows were oh, dude, like I would have half been. of this glass is broken out. I would have sucks. loved to have been here. Get the old boiler heaters up and running. Yep. I'm sure it would have been a nightmare to heat this place, but... Yeah. All right, what can we find for a bolt? Ooh. It's like exploring abandoned places, but they're not abandoned, although they should be. It will be. That is a hole. Do not step there. There's nothing there. Oh my gosh, this whole thing is a hole. I'm sure the shag carpet's doing its best to hold this floor together. Oh, surely. Ugh. Oh. Damn. Bout died. <laughs> <laughs> now the shag had you. I was just trying to get a cool shot of this charger. That was a fear fart. <laughs> oh no. There are stairs over here. We're saved. Would you dare to traverse them? No. <laughs> Not even a little. Here, toss the camera to me. It's like Indiana Jones. Now I just leave. That's a hole? Yeah. Don't step in this general area. <laughs> oh, shit. Mom, if you're watching this, it's fine. It's fine. I've done worse than the barns. All right. I'm going to go down these stairs now. Rip. I can see the underworld. If I make it down, you'll be just fine. That or I'll weaken them all the way down. Oh yeah, I forgot, I'm light. We're on the stage, Angus. I'm almost under the stage. <laughs> 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 Apparently that board's bad. Oh hey, the uh, the taillights of the truck are on. Oh, no. You never got the brake pedal back up, did you? No, I didn't. I figured out what the battery drain was. Hey, wait a minute, what's that? Is that approachable? Dang yes! I found a go kart. It's a dingo, I think. You're a dingo. <laughs> no, the never mind. That's not a go kart. That's a no kart. <laughs> You're fired. You guys want to see a go kart revival? Uh, I mean, I would. Screw it. Let's do it. If you guys want to see us revive this go kart frame back into something that we can drive around the yard, hit us up in the comments. Let us know. We will do it. Oh, dude. Dude, don't look at what we were walking on. Oh, I don't think they want to. <laughs> That's what we walked over. Oh, no. We would have fallen down onto this TR7. <laughs> Seems a little overly religious, meaning it's a little too holy for my my taste. <laughs> You're fired. Dude, check out all this. My MG? No, what's They're tiny. My foot's bigger than this one. <laughs> you have really big feet. Well, you know what they say about guys with big feet? They're sometimes bigger than small motors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's another one. Is this one bigger? Yeah, it is. This that's, is. That's the one then. Yeah. So basically, we just explored an old gymnasium, had a good time, about fell through and died 86 times, and then found a go kart. Yep. And All while looking for a bolt that was right next to where we started. All right, let's go shove that in the fuel line, plug our fuel from getting into the carburetor and onto the engine and starting a fire and then throw some gas down its throat and see if it lights off. There's a what? There's a basement. A basement? There's a basement. Oh dude, we have to go in there. I don't know about that. Uh, there, I see the basement, through the basement. I hear that like that old building hum of an electrical system running. I just pure farted. <laughs> <laughs> Today on Junkyard Digs, we go ghost hunting. Ooh. <laughs> I'll go down and then disappear from the camera. And then I'll say something about the presence, and then the will say there's a ghost. The presence! <laughs> <laughs> Here's the bathroom. Oh my goodness. It's down here. Why? There's a heater down there? Yeah, come on now. Oh, Step Jesus. on the very edge of the boards. All right, kids, if, if the camera goes flying, you know what happened. Ghosts. Uh, here, Angus, follow me into this deep, scary, dark hole where definitely nothing will happen to you. I think the humming noise is coming from this heater. I know it's trying. What a silly duck. 
Let's see, what's over here? Well, then there's the showers. Yep. There's a little hole over there in the wall where you can probably look under the girls' locker room and see boobies. Uh, ah, uh, ghosts. <laughs> well, I'm talking about the showers, not a big area. <laughs> oh boy. Well, I don't know what happened to this church camp, but. I think that was knocked out later for the year. Right. Let's look. I just took a photo with my ghost camera. And look it. There's a ghost. <laughs> God, I tried not to laugh. There, there's a presence. You're done. <laughs> oh my God. We're leaving. So, the big question, what's on the other side? I think we know the answer, but let's go look in. The paranormal side. Okay, well, here we are. Ghost hunting round two. This one's full of pressure washers. Let's see. The stairs seem to be in better condition. It seems to be much more uh, roomy down there and a little bit better, so. We're going critical battery levels here. Our electronics are acting wacko. No, no, no they're doing exactly what we expect. Holy shit, this one's way bigger. You know what? I think right, this might be the women's because it's all brick. <laughs> Wait, why do the women get a window? They get windows. I'm parked up. Come on, we, we know why someone designed windows into that wall. Jesus. It was it was the early 1900s. This place is something, I tell you what. Oh, oh, ah, ah, I guess, uh, something's got him. Ah, it's got him. Ah, oh, ah, oh, oh no. Ah, ah, I guess. Ah, wait, what are you doing? Wait, wait a minute. What are you doing tonight? You want to you wanna hang out? Well, yeah, there's that. We, uh, we lived through the whole ghost scenario. Uh, Angus realized since we were in the female locker room, it was probably a feminine ghost and yeah, to... I just I just tried to start a relationship, you know, form a connection, you know, a little bit of commitment, and it went away. It was gone. So now we'll get back to that revival thing we came here for. What were we even doing? Getting this bolt. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, that's that's fixed. Science. Time for the goo. I thought you were fist bumping. Nope, me. I was just pointing at the gas. Okay. Well, that's awkward. No more commitments. <laughs> 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 In hindsight, these are probably full since it was just, yeah, well, there it comes. Okay, a little more for the road. Definitely got enough gas in it. Yep. Um, yeah, make sure she's in neutral. I'll run your, your throttle to the best of my ability and we'll fire it off. Okay, you ready? Yep. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. Hit her again. Give her, give her Juan more. I'll run the gas. Go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, run, give her a little throttle. I'm gonna run the gas can. Go for it. Ugh. Sneeze. Yeah, it didn't like that. It didn't like, like that at all. Bit. See if she'll just run for a bit then. Go ahead. Damn. The idle's pretty good. That card might have some potential in it. Might also have some potato in it. <laughs> Go ahead, I'll see if I can get it to rev. I mean, on a technicality, I'd call that one a win. Yeah. A little bit of smoke coming out. Yeah, it's two-stroke gas. Like Angus just mentioned, we're using some two-stroke gas because there's a little extra oil in it. Help that top end out. Jesus. Oh my God. Angus, is that you? <laughs> it's out. Hey, I gotta, I gotta refill it. <laughs> see, if you, see if you can get a rev a bit. I'm gonna get an exhaust clip from behind. Right. Yeah, it really doesn't like that. Well, I guess there's only one thing to do now, and that's to get a working carburetor on this thing. Yeah. Well, what do you say? Do we see if we can bring that carb back to life, or just put the other one on? 
Yeah, we'll pop that off, see how bad it is. And then make a decision. Yep. Let's do it. Okay. So, fun fact about building carburetors, no matter how correctly you do it, unless you like literally take it to a science and machine things down to perfect levels and make sure it's absolutely within like a scientific levels of precision, which nobody does, unless you're paying $900 for a carb rebuild, a rebuild carb never really works right on cars. Uh, we've been rebuilding them here on the channel for years, and I've never had one that works as good as a new carburetor. Point in case, Angus's F100 that we just did in the last couple weeks, we uh, rebuilt that carburetor, and it was probably one of the best rebuilds I've ever had come out on the channel, and it was still just trash. Yep. The throttle shaft had so much play in it, and this one does too. Oh yeah, I see stuff oozing Yeah, let's, let's get them in here to show them a point here. At high mileages like this, these throttle shafts get so much play in them that they, in, of themselves, like to stick and be vacuum leaks, and you can see the gas seeping out around that one, so that's already a big leak. So that's a fail. Um, you could put bushings in that and redo it if you had some weird one-off carburetor that you wanted to preserve. But for the most part, this is never going to run as good as a new carburetor. Which is exactly what happened to yours. The throttle shaft bushings were so bad that it would like hang and it was unsafe and inconsistent. Yep. So we threw it in a trash can and put a two barrel holly on and that truck runs fantastic now. Yep. The I brought a brand new holly 350 CFM for that 292. Bolted right in place. It's perfect. I, I kind of gasped at the price, I was offended that it was so much, yeah. but after putting it on, it was such a good investment. It's not necessarily a performance carburetor, and it was more expensive than a 500, but for off idle performance and just around town cruising, that was the correct carb, and it made a world of difference. You can actually kind of start out in second now. Yep. And second is the tallest second gear I've ever seen on a truck that old. Yeah, me too. It is like straight up second gear takes you to like 40. Yeah. So, with that being said, we could screw around with this card that's got a million connections on it and then have just a poop-ass carburetor when we're done. Or we could take this off, put that other carb on, and have a running truck. Yep, and that will be a temporary fix because this isn't actually our truck. It's going right back to the guy you saw earlier in the video. It's his truck. It was his dad's truck. Before that, it was his granddad's truck. So, he's going to keep it. He has plans for this, and hopefully... They involve driving it relatively soon. And hopefully with a four barrel. Maybe. Because this is a Cleveland and it wants to breathe. Okay, listen you. What are you caught on? Reveal your secrets. Let it go. Let it go. Get the heck off of the intake. There it goes. <laughs> Just a little serenading. That's all it needed. Is the gasket stuck to the bottom of that, or is there no gasket? There's RTV. Oh my god, oh, what? Yeah, that's not impressive. Ew! There's oh, that's RTV blue. all over the bottom of that, and then no gasket on this side. That's just, the, that's just the spacer, which is also RTV to the intake. Oh my gosh, what? Well, if anybody <laughs> was wondering the wrong way to do that, that's the wrong way to do that. Yeah, this, this right here is not what you do, kids. <laughs> all right. We got our previously rebuilt two barrel. We're just gonna slap her on there. Oh, she's gonna need a gasket, isn't she? Yep, I didn't do any of that right. Heck, there's a bug on me. I haven't seen a bug in months. No bugs. So if you're ever doing a car in one of these 70s and late 60s uh, Fords, a two barrel, some of the four barrels probably have it too. This whole block right here comes off. This is all for the EGR. Uh, there is a gasket under here and then a gasket and then that plastic like um, phenolic spacer another gasket and then the carbs there's actually three gaskets that you need to excuse me i'm filming my arch enemy anyway there's three gaskets you need here so it'll be one which seems to be made of like uh cardboard or sandpaper or the side of a beer box and RTV. We're just gonna leave that and hope it works. And then two and three on either side of this phenolic, which I happen to have in my toolbox that already has gaskets on it from, I think, Angus's truck. So we'll just bippity boppity boop. There we go. Slip that little bugger on there and call it a day. Bolt everything down, assume it doesn't seal, and away we go. That'll be fine. 
That is the aforementioned rebuilt carburetor from Angus's truck, um, which I think I'm realizing has like half of the ports that we need, but it'll work for today. Yep. All right, get some nuts on that, bolt it down, fill it with gas, and hit the go button. All right, a little bit of time has passed, and we have everything set up, ready to make this run. We have the rebuilt carburetor from Angus's truck sitting in here, an electric fuel pump running off of a jug of two-stroke gasoline right here. And then we have the old fuel system rigged up to this line down into a bucket below the truck. And what that's going to do is pump out all the poop from our fuel system into this bucket below the truck, at which point we'll be able to flush everything out and get this thing set up to actually run off of its own gasoline system that much sooner while it's sitting here idling and we're playing with it. By now I have realized that this carburetor will not work at all for this truck because it is a manual carb, which means there's no hookup for the kick down and everything's just totally wrong. But for the purpose of this video to just get it running, I think that will be just fine. All right, turn your headlights on. Yep. There's our fuel pump. All right, I'm gonna keep clear of the fan. Go ahead. There it is. It's got an oil gauge. Uh, yeah, it's on the higher end than normal. Hell yeah. Battery is charging. Let's see if we're pumping fuel. Or not. So either that fuel pump's bad, or it's, you know, it just doesn't have any fuel in it. Give her a good rip. Sounds pretty darn healthy though. Yeah, it does. It's sitting there purring away now with the right carb on it. I'm sure she's purring along. Yeah. Let's uh, see if we got a working transmission. Just slip it into reverse and back in the car and see if it bogs. All right. There's reverse. Cool. That ran pretty damn good. Transmission seems to work, and we can't really do anything until we have that other carb rebuilt. So maybe we take that thing into the, the shop, do an ultrasonic on it, bring it out, and slap it back on. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's do it. You, uh, you guys want to explain what's going on here? Anyway, the carburetor's done, so we're going to take this back out of the truck, throw it on, and see if she runs. Morning, sir. Good morning. Ready for day two? I am. We went back to the shop and rebuilt the carburetor. And now we're going to go ahead and take that carburetor off and put the rebuilt one back on. And then be disappointed when it doesn't work very well because it's a rebuilt two barrel. Well, at least we won't be surprised. That's true. Go ahead and get the tools set up and hop to work and we'll find out. Today we're out here with a new vehicle to the channel. You guys have not seen this yet. But this is our 86 F250 with a 6.9 diesel and a turbo. I bought this from a guy to use as our revival rig. Uh, we're kind of testing it out today, see what needs worked on, see what needs fixed. Uh, so far the answer is a lot of stuff. But she runs and drives for now, so uh, if anyone has a service bed in the area, let me know. I want a nice low profile service bed for this thing so that we can still maybe haul a gooseneck or a big trailer and put all of our tools and stuff in it and make this the dedicated revival rig. But let's go ahead and get this carburetor on here and see if this thing runs better today. Huh. Pain. Oh no. All right, there we go. Now we'll put this bastardization back on there. Hook up the 10,000 connections it requires. And see how she does. All right, our carburetor is reinstalled. 
got everything hooked up. As you can see, she came out pretty okay. Uh, would you like to go turn the headlights on and activate the fuel pump? Yep. At which point I will smack the heck out of this because it's probably going to have a stuck needle. Looks like she worked. We got an accelerator pump. All right. You should have a uh, throttle and everything now. I feel it. Hit it, sir. Go for it. I forgot to hook one of the cylinders up. Try it again. <laughs> yep, typical two barrel stuff. Won't run without choke. Yeah, this one's got the whole thermal choke thing, so it's not working. All right, go ahead, do it again. Just the choke hands first, so we got choked. Die. Yeah, that's literally exactly what every two barrel I've ever rebuilt does. It will not run without choke. They're just, you just, you can rebuild them all day long. Once in a while, they'll work. But for the most part, just buy a new Holly two barrel and put it on there and never worry about it. Besides tuning it. I'm going to turn this so that this automatic choke actually engages. Right now, I got it disengaged. We'll richen this up and then we'll be back. Let's see, you want to go what, this way? Alright, we got our choke figured out. Everything in here should be good to go for a little yard drive. Uh, one problem is I can't see a daggum thing. So we need to fix that quick. Hit her with some D germ. Thanks. Good. Well, let's get the old dorsal out of the way and go for a little yard test. Oh, the lap of luxury, 1986, for towing your camper anyway. Just zip ties and bias pies its way right off. Look at that thing go. <laughs> Ketchup. Wrong channel. <laughs> so we know reverse works, uh, and we know we don't have brakes. And we know it kind of runs. We don't know anything about power steering. We don't know anything about drive. Drive. Hey. <laughs> Roll this down for you. Man, I love this interior color. That's so nice. Such a good blue. A nice dark blue dash. Yeah. A beautiful truck. This is seriously one of the prettiest like 79 F100s I've ever seen. I love this paint scheme. And I usually don't like truck toppers, but I like that one.
What a view! Aww. <laughs> yeah, that uh, just off idle doesn't do it. Well, actually, idle doesn't do it. It won't idle. And that all comes down to that two barrel again, but just off idle. She just puts along. Well, I'll tell you what, we can't end on just a little yard driving. We've yeah. got a big empty gymnasium with a wet floor. A sweet F-150 that's got a 351 Cleveland in it and a set of dry rotted tires we brought along. You think I, what I'm thinking? I think I am. So there it is. We took this truck that has been sitting right here in this abandoned gymnasium for the last 10 years, did a little bit of work, went through the carb, and had it driving around the yard in no time whatsoever. Which means we got a little extra time on our hands. So we've put the tires from the 73 Bronco on the back and we're about to turn it into smoke. crazy shit make sure you subscribe to all our friends thunderhead 289 dill mccool classic Mustangs 429 junkyard mook golden rust and bust the boss garage vice grip garage garden cameras the whole crew we'll see you right here next week on junkyard digs peace Woo! dude i bet it is rolling out the windows let's go you know what we never did we never called the fire department i'm sure it's fine uh oh my god that was massive. Oh yeah, <laughs> look at this. <laughs> oh yeah, it is pouring out. That's the most life this place has seen in years. Hell yeah, man, that's a win. Oh man. Yeah, that does look like it's a good we should, uh, we should probably call this in. Yeah. Okay, so it's been 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see a thing. I, we definitely have cancer now. Oh yeah. Like watch this. Angus, walk that way. I've always wanted to die. Gone. <laughs> Where are you? Oh, hey, ah. what's up? That was a hellacious burnout. That was. There you go, Cletus McFarland. You want to bring someone down to the Freedom Factory that can do a burnout. I don't think there's better proof than the fact that you cannot see the building we used to be standing in. <laughs> a half hour later. What do you guys think? Junkyard Digs need to go down to the Freedom Factory? I think that'd be a blast. Let's make it happen. Blow it up on social media next time they make a... Uh, Free to 500 posts or anything about burnouts. Go ahead and tag the hell out of Junkyard Digs. Let's see if we can get me down there to do this. It's the ghost! No! I knew it was haunted. <laughs>